Edexcel A-Level Maths Mechanics, Summer 2019, Question 4. A ramp AB of length 8 metres and mass 20 kilograms rests in equilibrium with the end A on rough horizontal ground. The ramp rests on a smooth solid cylindrical drum, which is partly under the ground. The drum is fixed with its axis at the same horizontal level as A. The point of contact between the ramp and the drum is C, where AC equals 5 metres, as shown in figure 2. The ramp is resting in a vertical plane, which is perpendicular to the axis of the drum, at an angle theta to the horizontal, where tan theta equals 7 over 24. The ramp is modelled as a uniform rod. For part A, we need to explain why the reaction from the drum on the ramp at point C acts in a direction which is perpendicular to the ramp. So, the important thing here is that our ramp is resting on a smooth cylindrical drum, so there are no friction forces, so we say the drum is smooth, therefore the reaction is perpendicular to the ramp. For part B, we need to find the magnitude of the resultant force acting on the ramp at A. So, first thing to do here is to label all our forces on our diagram. So, at A, we've got the resultant force, from the ground acting on the ramp. And because the ground is rough, we're gonna have a friction force going to the right. We know it's going to the right because it's stopping the ramp from slipping along the floor to the left. We've also got the force due to gravity. So the mass of our ramp is 20 kilograms. So the force is 20 G acting vertically downwards halfway along the ramp. And we've also got the reaction force mentioned in part A which we're going to call N. This is perpendicular, acting five meters along where the rod meets the drum. It's also useful at this point to get our cos and sine angles. So we're told that tan theta is seven over 24. We we'll draw a quick right angle triangle here with the seven opposite and the 24 adjacent to the angle theta. With Pythagoras, we can see that the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 24 squared plus seven squared which is 25. We can now use this to find sine theta, which must be 7 25ths, and cos theta, which is 24 25ths. Now we've got all these, we're ready to solve our question. We can now try and find our missing forces. So there are three missing forces, N, R, and F. We need to find R and F to get the magnitude of the resultant force. But to find these, it's gonna help if we also know N. Now, there are many equations we can find at this point. We can resolve horizontally or vertically in relation to the ground. We could do the same thing in relation to the ramp. We can take moments around various points. It doesn't matter, but some of them will be more effective for what we need than others. One way to go about this is to find equations that use as few of the unknowns as possible. So, for example, if we find moments around A, we're not going to need to find R or F. We're just going to get an equation with N, and some forces that we know. So moments around A going anti-clockwise, we've just got that N, which is five meters away and perpendicular to the ramp. Going clockwise, we've just got the 20G, now this is four meters away. Now this one isn't perpendicular. So to match it up, we're gonna go through the angles. So we're gonna use cos theta. So we're gonna get 5N is equal to four times 20G cos theta. Well, we know that cos theta is 24 over 25. So this is going to be 80G times 24 over 25 on the right-hand side, which is equal to 752.64. So N is equal to 150.528. So now we've only got two forces that we don't know, the R and the F. So again, if we can find an equation that removes one of them, then we've got everything we need to find the other one. So let's resolve horizontally. This means we're not going to need R. So to the right, we've just got F acting along the ground. To the left, we've got part of N. This time we are going horizontally, so we want N sine theta. So N is 150.528 times by sine theta, which is seven over 25, gives us F is 42.14784. We can now resolve vertically to find R. So upwards, we've got R, We've got n, but this time it's n cos theta. Downwards, we've just got the 20g, 
So r plus n cos theta equals 20g. So r is equal to 20g minus our n of 150.528 times by the cos theta of 24 over 25, which is equal to 51.49312. Now we've got r and f to find the resultant. We're just going to do the square root of the sum of the squares of r and f, which gives us a resultant force of 66.5. For part C, the ramp is still in equilibrium in the position shown in figure two, but the ramp is not now modeled as being uniform. Given that the center of mass of the ramp is assumed to be closer to A than to B, we need to state how this would affect the magnitude of the normal reaction between the ramp and the drum at C. So one way to think about this is by using one of the equations we've just used, which was a moment around A. So we had 5n equals four times 20g cos theta. Now the four here, that is, comes from the distance away from A. So originally, the mass, the force due to the mass on this ramp was acting four meters away from A. So we multiplied the force of 20 g cos theta by four. But now we're saying that the center of mass is closer to A. So this four is gonna decrease, hence the right-hand side will decrease, hence N will also decrease. If you've enjoyed this video, remember to subscribe to the Doing Maths channel to keep up to date with all the latest releases.